Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that even on a channel with a video about morons who need to tell wrestling fans that wrestling is fake, I still get comments from morons who need to tell wrestling fans that wrestling is fake. Well, it's November, and no wrestling channel who talks about big moments in history can get around talking about this one. It's time to talk about the screw job. What happened? No, no, not that one. What the hell? They're in all along! All three of them! Or that one. In fact, I'm not talking about any of the screw jobs that tried to mimic, reference, or make fun of Montreal. No, we're going further back in time. In fact, today in wrestling history! November 25th, 1985. Eight months after winning the WWF Women's, then Ladies Championship at WrestleMania 1 as part of the Rock and Wrestling connection with Cyndi Lauper, Wendy Richter had been in some hot water with the company. She found out how much more the male performers were making for Mania than she had made. Roddy Piper got about 75 grand, Paul Orndorff 20k, Wendy Richter 5. Now Wendy wasn't in the main event, no, but you could make a huge argument that she was an integral player in the drawing of people to the show and the promotion of it, or rather, Cyndi Lauper was. On top of that, besides being the face of the division, she wanted more. But that's a standard plight for female performers. In fact, most women were getting the same or less than the curtain jerkers. The two exceptions were Wendy Richter and the fabulous Moolah, who also had a booking fee and collected a percentage from the other women she brought to the shows. Carrying on though, Richter was slated for only her second televised defense of the title since WrestleMania in Madison Square Garden against the Spider. Not much was known about the Spider, but that's by design. Now putting a wrestler under the hood isn't anything new, in fact, there are benefits to it. It gives some performers a chance to work twice and collect a second payday. And if the original person under the hood isn't able to perform, no biggie. Just throw somebody else under there and fans will be none the wiser. And that appears to have been the plan here. Glenn Dean, who normally portrays the spider, was in the garden on the day of the show, but she never made it to the ring. Instead, Richter found herself eye to eye with a shorter, stockier, fabulous Moolah. Moolah was known to be a bit stiff, take cheap shots and so forth, leaving Richter not only having to change the original plan on the fly, but to protect herself because something was obviously wrong. And Richter wanted to make sure everybody knew it. Several times during the match, she tried to take the mask off of the challenger, something a babyface never does. And then, the screw job. Spider going, oh, small package. Nicely executed. Whoa, was that close? You saw that right. Referee counted to three, even though Richter kicked out at one. And Gorilla Monsoon sounded more confused than Art Donovan at King of the Ring. What was that? Referee made a three count? Appears that the referee has made a three count. For some reason, Richter tried to continue the match, deadlifting Moolah for a backbreaker and trying to pin her despite the bell ringing and the ref out of sight. Reality then sunk in with perhaps Howard Finkel's oddest announcement ever. And new World Wrestling Federation Ladies Champion, the Spider, the Fabulous Moolah. And at this point, Richter saw red. She got a few more shots in before Moolah left, accompanied by the police. It's said then that Richter didn't even change when she got to the back. She grabbed her stuff, went to the airport, got her ticket, still wearing her spandex. The WWE then went on a scrubbing spree. Wendy Richter was never booked again for the remainder of her contract, and when they did reference what happened, they'd speed through it and move on to the next subject, leaving fans to ask, what the fuck and why? That is Moolah, there's no question about it. Kamala, the Ugandan headhunter, was originally managed by the classy Freddy Blassie. Wendy Richter wouldn't be seen near a WWE event again until 2010. She would appear on Raw in 2012 after everybody had patched their differences. Now here's the thing, Richter said that if they wanted her to drop the title, she would have. It's not like she wasn't under a contract, she had years left on it. She wanted to renegotiate her deal because her standing in the company was different than when she signed. That's a whole different can of worms though, but damned if this didn't feel slimy. You see, with the Montreal one, which I promise one day I will have to talk about, 
It could be argued that Brett's contract was running out, he had already signed a deal with a rival company. They needed to do something and do something fast while trying to work around his creative control. So you could blame Vince, or you could blame Sean and Earl and even Brett a fair bit. But when it comes to this one, the original screw job, it's really hard to blame Wendy Richter here. She was still showing up, she was still doing her thing, working fair, and trying to get something better for down the road. Hell, it's hard to even blame Moolah. And anybody who's been with me a while here knows my opinion of Moolah. She did her job. Presumably because Glenn Dean refused to go along with the plan. Moolah didn't orchestrate anything, and I have doubts that this was a ploy to make sure she remained the highest paid woman. Something that, yeah, she already had a reputation of doing. That ref? Fuck that ref, he's incompetent. Now this one falls squarely on one person, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, who could have handled business like a businessman, crazy concept. Vince wrote the checks, Vince booked the cards, Vince could have just scheduled her to lose the damn thing, hell, she'd already lost the belt once in February. He could have done that, he could have lied about having Wendy regain it again at WrestleMania 2 and just never book her again. Instead, he went with the nuclear option, the one that was specifically meant to hurt the most. The option that would keep the rest of the roster afraid to ask for a raise or renegotiate their deals. Man, if only Ventura had gotten that union off the ground. But hey, based on how 2020's been going, it's not too late, right? Now that's all just my opinion. What did you think of the original screw job? Do you blame Vince for how he handled it? Do you blame Mula for trying to keep her stranglehold over the women? Or do you blame Wendy Richter for flying too close to the sun and demanding too much? Let me know what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more because I want you to be a part of the conversation too. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.